Hello, and welcome to the Be Purely Balanced podcast. I'm Dr. Crystal Couture, and today I'm here with Karen Berzanski, and we are talking about EFT and tapping. Karen is a certified life coach and pro EFT tapping coach who works with creative and spiritual entrepreneurs to build their confidence and their mindset as they grow their online businesses. Karen found tapping after being hit and run over by a car in 2008. It helped her heal from PTSD and chronic pain, move across the country from New York to LA and start her own business. She now teaches other women how to use their past to propel them into the future and the businesses of their dreams. Welcome, Karen. Thank you so much for having me, Crystal. I'm excited to be here. It's such a pleasure to have you. Uh, you know, your story has been one that has moved me since the moment that we met from this, this virtual perspective. And it was clear how tapping was such an appropriate and effective modality for you. Mm. I'd love for you to really just share your journey, um, how you came to find tapping and what, what your sacred healing journey looked like. Yeah, my sacred healing journey was long and twisty, like many sacred healing journeys are. Um, after I was hit and run over by the car, I experienced, like you said, a tremendous amount of chronic pain and PTSD. Um, the pain kind of morphed into like every part of my body at, at a certain point because I landed on my left hip on the concrete and my right ankle was run over and the, it was so concentrated in those areas that the rest of my body essentially tried to compensate for the overwhelm in those two areas. So I didn't know anything about the nature of pain or I didn't, or PTSD at the time. So, you know, at 29, I thought I was just kind of going crazy and I couldn't like talk about anything except the accident. The pain started to get a lot worse before it started to get better. I was crying all the time. I was having nightmares. Um, I lost my job. So it was like all of these things all at once that were kind of building up inside of my system. And I was going to all of these doctors, Eastern doctors, Western doctors, trying to figure out what was wrong with me and how to fix it and how to get rid of this pain and how to stop crying all the time. Yeah. And, um, you know, essentially nothing was really working. It was just, it started to get a lot worse before it started to get better. Um, and, what I realized um, after I found EFT, which was on a retreat that I went on about four and a half years later after the accident, um, what I realized is that all of the physical pain was being held in place by all of the emotions around what had happened that I had pushed down and suppressed and didn't want to feel. And all of the stories that I created about myself about what was now possible for me in the world because this thing happened, about my hopes and dreams for myself, about my physical body, about um, just about everything in my life and what I could accomplish in my life. Um, and, I, and all of that residual you know, emotional pain and grief and sadness just around having to go through all of this, which was such a big event and a big thing that took so long and took, you know, what, what felt like, what really was like years out of my young life to deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis. And until I was willing to really feel into all of that and allow it to come up and let it, you know, express itself in all of its uncomfortableness, um, until I was willing to do that, I couldn't, I couldn't actually heal from what happened. And through EFT, through this weird tapping thing, I, you know, I was at a point where I was willing to start to let what was pushed down come up. And as I let what was pushed down come up, what happened is that the emotional pain around what I had been through started to lift. And then as the emotional pain started to lift, the physical pain started to release. And um, that happened over time. It wasn't like in one session, all the pain was gone. But I got such tremendous relief in the first session that I had with uh, a, an EFT master that I just randomly met at a, at a retreat that I was on. It wasn't like an EFT retreat. He just happened to be at the same retreat that I was. It was a healing related retreat. And he asked me if I wanted a session because he heard my story. And I was like, I'll try anything at this point, even tapping on my freaking face. <laughs> yeah. 
So Whoa. that was a, a life changing session for me. And, um, and then I just got intensely curious about what had happened and what he did. And I was like, what the, can I, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear on this show. <laughs> I was like, what the f did this, did this guy do to me? Um, so I started studying and learning everything that I could about tapping and I continued to use it. And now it's, um, let's see, it's probably six years later, five, six years later. And I have released about 90 to 95% of the physical pain um, virtually all of the PTSD. I still have an occasional nightmare, but besides that, it's gone. Um, and like I said, like you said in my bio, like I moved across the country. Um, I started a you know fresh life on the West Coast. Started my own business. Decided I wanted to use this tool to um, you know to help other women in in their own lives and um, and help propel them forward. Yeah. So yeah. what a testament you know, your own experience is to the work. Yeah. <laughs> so I always find that, you know, once you've experienced your own work, once you've, you know, really gone in that deep and it's been what has saved you in many yeah. ways, right? Yeah. It's yeah. so much easier to share that work and there's such a passion that's linked to it. And you know, believing in it and practicing it every day, which I know you do, just yeah. helps so much as a healer, right? Yeah, there's no doubt in my mind that it works. And, you know, I, I still don't understand exactly how it works. Like I can know a little bit of the science behind it. But I think the, the truth behind any modality like this, it's like we sort of don't know exactly how it works. But it seems to work for just about everyone on, on lots of different issues, which is just fascinating. But it makes sense because it's like, you know, of course, like all of those emotions, you feel emotions in your body, like they get stuck there and you can feel them and they become the blocks that are keeping you from whatever it is that you want in your life. Yeah. The so, tissue has memory. Yeah. Issues in your tissues. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I think that's yeah. a great way to put it. So People are probably curious about the science, and we can get into that a little bit. Um, but actually, why don't we just sort of start off with what is tapping? What is EFT? Yeah, so um, EFT is actually short for Emotional Freedom Technique. What I practice is actually called Pro EFT, which is Progressive Energy Field Tapping, which builds on the basic building blocks of the basic formula that EFT um, has presented. So it is a combination of ancient Chinese acupressure and modern psychology, and we're tapping on very specific points on the body. They're the same points that they use in ancient Chinese acupressure um, and in acupuncture, except we're not using needles, which is great. We're just tapping lightly um, on those points. And what we're doing is we're saying very specific words and phrases based on the issue or the thing that you're working on or that you want to process or release or move through. So we're un while we're speaking um, these very specific words and phrases, we're uncovering the hidden belief patterns that have been stuck in what we call the swampy area of your mind. It's kind of like, we always talk about it like it's the back of your head, like the swampy area where all of those hidden beliefs and old programs hang out. Mm -hmm. And we're bringing conscious awareness, we're shining the flashlight on those things as we're tapping through the points. And we're allowing the back to come to the front so that we have that conscious awareness around that programming that has been running our lives and keeping us from the thing that we say that we want that we haven't been able to achieve yet. Mm -hmm. So as we shine the light on those things and we bring awareness to them, we, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, I didn't know this was there. I didn't know this was the thing that was holding me back. And once we have that conscious awareness, that puts us in the driver's seat again to make a new, more empowering choice and create new beliefs and new thought patterns for ourselves moving forward. Hmm. Yeah, really, really great description. I, I love how you uh, put that into words that are very easy for people to understand. That's wonderful. So the science behind the tapping, right? There's science behind mm -hmm. acupuncture and acupressure mm -hmm. as their own modalities. So it's a little bit of a different form of stimulation um, by tapping and also by using psychology, right? Right. So how does that all kind of blend together and how does the science piece come in? Yeah, so tapping, um, it's been scientifically proven that tapping, while we're tapping on these points on the body, what it does is it sends a calming signal to the amygdala in your brain. And the amygdala 
is where the fight or flight center is housed. And when the fight or flight center is activated, it puts us into what I call freaked out brain, where we just feel crazy, we feel all over the place, we can't make decisions, we lose touch with our intuition. We all know this place, we're frustrated, we're overwhelmed. Um, and when we're tapping, that calming signal is sent to the brain. And it says to the fight or flight center in the amygdala, it's safe to calm down. It's safe mm. to relax. It's safe to let this go. It's safe to be present in the moment. And it puts us into what I call peace brain. And when we're in peace brain, we have access to our resources. We have access to our creativity. We feel more grounded. We feel more centered. We feel more sane. And it's a place where, you know, anything is possible and we're going to just make better choices healthier choices on behalf of what it is that we want to create in the world and who we want to be beautiful i love this idea of the way that you described the messages coming to the amygdala and so what i instantly think about and this is kind of my hot topic lately is neuroplasticity right mm -hmm. so as we're engaging in tapping as we're doing more and more tapping and practicing it more and more regularly, it seems to me that naturally we're going to build pathways that tell our brain, hey, it's okay. Hey, we can relax. Yeah. Which builds in this longevity to the process and to the modality, right? Definitely. And it helps build confidence over time because if we've been running a negative pattern in our life for so long, like you said, it's, you know, that that our brain has picked up the idea that like that's the that's what's going to happen moving forward the past equals the future yeah. and as we start to tap and we identify the feelings around all those old patterns and all the emotions that are around it and this you know there's probably like oh I don't think I can ever change around that it's too hard it's not possible for someone like me I have so much evidence as to why this is true and that's, we speak all of that out while we're tapping through the points because that's what's, that's the big block that's keeping us from creating the new pattern because we don't want to acknowledge that, you know, that dark stuff is there, that that negative stuff in there. And a lot of time, especially in the, this personal growth world, like we're afraid to speak it because we think it's going to like make it manifest in our reality. When in reality, when we speak it, it just frees it up to release and dissolve on its own. And that creates the space that we need in our physical body, in our emotional body, in our spiritual body, to really welcome in that new thought pattern, that new belief system, and that sense of trust that as we now take action um, with this you know, new awareness that we're not going to recreate the past, we have the ability to create a new future for ourselves. Yeah. And really, it, it comes down to that awareness, right? Yeah. yeah. So the idea, I think when you're talking about the, the swampy area of the brain where we kind of, you know, forget what's there, it's sort of like the subconscious, right? Mm -hmm. Some of these emotions that we're protecting ourselves from, but also that our brain is for protecting us from. Right. And yeah. yet they're a limiting factor, aren't they? Yeah. And all of those programs, like in that swampy area, in that dark place, they're all just trying to keep us safe yeah. because they're the parts of us that have been wounded in the past from different events and different people and different things that have happened in our lives that say, it's not safe to move forward. It's not safe to be healthy. It's not safe to make a certain amount of money. It's not safe to be fully authentically you. And, you know, as we start to identify, like, where did we pick that up? And where is that living in our bodies? And then we do some tapping around that. And that, you know, that can be the, the trigger to free us up and allow us to, to move into the life that we really want to live. Yeah. So the keys, it sounds like the keys is, is really working with changing the patterns. Yeah, definitely. Changing the patterns. Yeah, that's wonderful. So I'm really curious. The moment when, it's clear the moment when you knew that there was something to tapping was after your first experience. Mm -hmm. But what was the moment like when you decided, I really want to share this with other people? Mm. I think after I had done so much work and I had such a visceral experience myself, and it wasn't like I didn't decide that I wanted to do this before I moved to California. Like I moved to California first 
and started doing other things. And then as I continued to do my own work and see results in my life and really start to feel like I could have the life that I really dreamed of and started to get in touch with like a sense of um, what was possible for me again. That was so thrilling for me um, that I think I just, you know, I've always been um, one of those people who has had an entrepreneurial spirit, doesn't want to, you know, live in a cubicle her whole life. And it just made sense to me that, you know, I'm like, I have had such great results with this that I think I need to get certified and start working with other people and see if I like it and see what happens and see where this goes. So, um, you know, tapping on myself gave me the courage to explore that and see if it was a path that I wanted to continue down. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. So now you've had the business for a few years, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so what is the greatest lesson that you've learned through tapping with all of these clients that have come to you? That, you know, when it comes down to it, it's really simple and it's really easy. And I think we overcomplicate ourselves and we overcomplicate our issues in our lives. And we even overcomplicate tapping of like, oh, I'm not doing it right, or I have to do it this way, or I don't know the words and blah, blah. Like tapping is really gentle and really simple and really easy. And I think that's a big deterrent for people sometimes because they're like, oh, this needs to be harder. And it's like, no, you know, like what you need to move through and process, like it actually doesn't need to be so hard. It can be really simple and really fast. And I think we have, a lot of us are programmed with like, I need to work hard in order to get results or in order to X, Y, Z. So I think letting the process be easy and simple and fast um, has, has been has been a big aha for me. And it's been really lovely to see in other people that when they get it, it's like, oh, oh, okay. All right, now yeah, I understand. And they have this moment of like awareness around something that has happened. And then automatically they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that this was the thing that was holding me back. And then they start to make new choices moving forward. Mm -hmm. And it's simple and it's easy. And it's only our, our human selves that tend to throw in the monkey wrench or throw in the obstacle so that we have something to overcome because that's part of our programming as we've grown up in this crazy world of like, oh, I need to make it harder. I need to overcome. I need to, you know, place obstacles in my path. This can't be that easy. So I think allowing the process to just be easy and simple um, has been a great lesson for me. Mm. What would you say is the most special part of working with clients? Um, when I see them have one of those aha moments where they make a connection from something that happened in the past that's keeping them from the thing, usually the thing that they've signed up to work with me on. <laughs> um, and they're like, oh my God, I didn't know that this thing in the past that seems completely unrelated to the issue that I came to you with is actually keeping me from moving forward. For example, I, um, I worked with a client a couple of years ago who um, came to me because she was creatively blocked and she wanted to write a book and she hadn't written in years and she just couldn't force herself to do it. And she'd worked with a bunch of life coaches and gotten, you know, gotten great tips and everything, but hadn't, hadn't started writing. And I was like, well, let's see what happens. And as we started digging around in her past, um, what came up is that she had had an abortion when she was really young. And the decision that she made was that she wasn't worthy of the success that she desired, that because she had done this and she had no regrets about it. Like she was totally cool with it. She would go back and, you know, do the same thing again. But she had made, she had created a belief that, she could only get so far because she had had an abortion and done this and um, felt so guilty about it, like still felt that guilt um, and like she had done something wrong. And she was essentially punishing herself by not allowing herself to move into the success that she truly desired. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we had to tap through all of that guilt and um, you know all of those feelings that were still around that 
And lo and behold, she started writing again. And I was like, you know, I still, I'm like, oh my God, like really? <laughs> I'm astounded when things like that happen. That's wonderful. Yeah. It, it makes me think too about the pressures of society, right? Mm-hmm. And how there's this idea of right and wrong. And we learn this idea of right and wrong, whatever right and wrong is, whatever mm-hmm. topic, whatever essence, whatever it is, right? We learn something about right and wrong at a young age and we embed that into our brain. Right. And we kind of set ourselves up in many ways to be scared, one. Yep. So of course we're filing things back. And mm-hmm. two, to not have access to our authenticity and how that changes in, you know, right. from year to year or, right. you know, decade to yeah. decade. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it can be really intense and we can know something is true on an intellectual level, especially, you know, for those of us in the spiritual personal development world, like we can know these principles are true and we're like, you know, we're, we're behind them, but yet there's something that's still holding us back and we're not sure exactly what it, what it is. And I, I think it is like those societal expectations, those old family beliefs are incredibly strong, like depending on, um, you know, your family of origin and their beliefs around what they thought or think is possible for you yeah. um, physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially, geographically. And if we're not careful, we will live into the expectations that our family of origin, our mom, our dad, our sisters, brothers, aunts, uncles set for us rather than being guided by our own authentic truth. Yeah. 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 Hmm. And those are like, as I've been working with people, especially in um, my course, um, I'm seeing that as like the strongest pull and the strongest thing that can hold people back. And when we start to dig into that, like that's where the, you know, a lot of emotion can really come up around that because people don't realize sometimes how much they've been holding themselves back because of, you know, their mom's expectation of where that, you know, where she thought that they should go or whatever that thing happens to be. So there can be some sadness around that, around just acknowledging like, oh my gosh, I've lived like this for years. This isn't, ex- this isn't the life that I want. This is the life that my mom wants for me. And I've lived right into it. Mm-hmm. And now what? Yeah. It's, it's so powerful when we, you know, empower someone. And this is really what you're doing through tapping. You're using a tool and you're offering a tool. Um, but it's also a a substantial tool of empowerment because you're giving them access with, of course, the tapping and then also your support to tune in to the emotions, right? To Mm -hmm. tune in to the things that they might not have felt or might have been protecting themselves from or Mm -hmm. might have blocked. Um, But power really comes from, it's it's not about that strength, it's not about that force. Power really comes from this internal relationship with oneself, this internal awareness. Mm -hmm. It sounds like with the tapping, everything that you're doing, each layer of the emotions that you're uncovering are just bringing these individuals closer and closer and closer to their authenticity, which in turn gets them closer and closer to their desire. Exactly. Exactly. We always say tapping is like peeling an onion. Mm. It's the same thing. Yeah. We just keep peeling off those layers, going a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper until we hit on like who you really are Mm. and what is the life? What does the life look like that you really want to live into? Who do you really want to be in this lifetime? What are the kinds of choices that you want to make? What are the kinds of people you want to work with? What's the kind of difference that you want to make? You know, where do you want to live? Mm. Sometimes we don't have answers to these questions. And that's because all that fear is, is, is still inside. And that's why when we're tapping, we're always, always, always going straight to the fear and straight to the resistance. And even though I have this fear or this resistance, and here's what it's keeping me from, and there's a part of me that doesn't want to let it go. And we acknowledge that immediately. There's this part of me that doesn't want to let it go. Well, why might that be? Because that fear is always trying to keep us safe. It's always trying to keep us safe. Yeah. And so I I think it's important to note this, right? That fear is keeping us safe. So Mm -hmm. 
sometimes it's really easy for people to have a regret or to have, you know, like a, I wasted X amount mm -hmm. of time in my life, right? Mm -hmm. Serving this fear. Mm -hmm. But the reality is until you gained the awareness, until that moment when it came clear to you, right? right? That fear was serving a substantial purpose. And you didn't have a choice. Yes. If you don't have the awareness, you literally don't have the choice. Yeah. Yeah. And it, you don't have the tools until you have yeah. the tools. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. It's like that, um, that Maya Angelou quote, you did then what you knew. And when you knew better, you did better. Exactly. Yeah. yeah that's a wonderful quote. Yeah. Um, all right. So just real quick, kind of bullet question. What would you say are three tips that your modality tapping has, has kind of gifted you to share with the world? I think befriending our dark side. Mm. Um, I think, you know, as we start to heal ourselves and get in touch with our quote unquote dark side, um, that that really frees us up and it, it helps us to not only have more compassion for ourselves, but to have more compassion for other people. Because as you start to do the work yourself, you can start to see where other people haven't done the work and where their fear is popping up. And for me, it's been so much easier to not engage with that fear, not be triggered by that fear and have compassion for that fear and not react to it. And what's going on on a global scale now is everybody is just reacting to everybody else and everybody's fear is out to play and everybody's dark side is reacting to everybody else's dark side. Because, you know, when you're in touch with your own negativity, your own biases, your own resistance, it's like you're not, it's not that you're never triggered. You're, we're human, right? We all get triggered from time to time. But we don't mo move through the world like yelling at people or thinking that, you know, other people's opinions are so wrong or they need to die or anything like that. It's like, well, let's have a conversation about this. <laughs> so I think like it really puts you in a place with tapping one of the gifts, like it really, it, it puts me in a place of curiosity um, and wanting to explore um, other people and other people's perspectives rather than having that kind of reactive, um, response. Yeah. 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 Exactly. That's one thing, I guess, or multiple things <laughs> <laughs> wrapped into one. Yeah. That was, that was all weaved in really yeah. nicely. Um, yeah, I, I instantly think of this idea, right? We can't, we can't know light until we know dark. And yeah. so it's interesting when the dark side is coming out and I've never had this perspective until our conversation, when the dark side is coming out in these reactive ways, it's because we don't know it. Right. Yeah. And we often afterwards realize like, Oh my gosh, like, did I really just say that? Yeah. Or, you know, two years right. later, did I really just say that? Like, was mm -hmm. I really that reactive? Mm -hmm. Holy crap. Mm -hmm. And that's because we just don't, we just don't know. And we're not taught to know that, right? right. We're just yeah. not taught to know all the parts of ourselves. Yeah. And anytime we're triggered by someone else's stuff, like if someone else is being a jerk or being is, is angry, and then all of a sudden we get angry because they're getting angry. It's like, well, our anger that, that we're not okay with is being projected to us through this other person's anger. And we're mad that we're seeing our own anger being reflected back to us. So we respond with anger, not knowing that like, this is all about us and not about them. But the, you know, we've essentially, so Debbie Ford always used to say, Debbie Ford wrote The Dark Side of the Light Chasers. And if you want to know more about, I don't know if you've read any Debbie Ford, but she was such a catalyst for me in, in, my, in my 20s. Um, she wrote this great book called The Dark Side of the Light Chasers. But she always used to say that when you're suppressing, you know, any part of yourself, whether it's anger or jealousy or rage, like none of these parts of us are bad. But when we try, try to suppress them, it's like holding a beach ball underwater or trying to hold a beach ball underwater. Like you can only do it for so long. But when someone comes and like triggers you a little bit, like that beach ball is going to come up and smack you in the face and you're going to react. 
But if you're just like, I'm okay with my anger, I'm okay with my rage, I'm okay with my sadness, I'm okay with my loneliness, and all these beach balls are just kind of floating around you, and like, you're, it's okay, I'm human. I know that all of these things might may come up from time to time. They're going to come up in myself, they're going to come up in other people, and that's okay. I have tools to, to navigate um, this crazy human experience. But if we're trying to hold all the beach balls down, it's like, that's when, you know, that's when things can get a little edgy. <laughs> sure. And that's also when things like, you know, chronic pain, like, I, and when you can't get rid of it because you're trying, you're just holding on so tightly, you know, it's like you're walking around in the world with a, with a tight fist, like your whole body is a clenched fist and it's just waiting for like, you know, a space to, you know, jump up and react to someone else. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So what would you say are the top three sort of emotions that kind of come up that seem to be the repetitive patterns? Because I, I hear, mm-hmm. I'll let you, I'll let you answer first and then I'll, I'll tap in. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say, I mean, there's so many, but um, anger, shame, shame is huge. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe self-judgment okay yeah Yeah. which is related to shame um or i would say disappointment or self-judgment comes up yeah i was like you were saying before like you know kind of like sometimes when you have the realization of like oh my gosh i didn't realize that this was going on for such a long time there's sadness and disappointment that comes up yeah so I was reading this article and it said something, the percentage was crazy. And I don't remember off the top of my head, but the percentage was crazy about the emotions that come up. And it said fear was number one Mm -hmm. and number two was anger. Mm -hmm. And number three was something like self-judgment or um, problems with self-worth, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, And those are all fear. Like it's all fear. That, that's why it's almost why I didn't say it because it's kind of like a blanket emotion. And when people say, Oh, that the emotion is fear. I'm like, well, what's underneath the fear? Like, let's go a little bit deeper. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Fear is yeah. always, it's always yeah. number one. Yeah. Fears, fears big. Yeah. So, um, you're really excited to share with our listeners a little bit of tapping today. Um, I and that. I'm really excited for you to share with our listeners tapping as well. Yeah, I would love to do. What's that? How should we start with that? Um, Well, we should choose a topic and then start tapping. So, um, yeah. So hmm, I feel like after our conversation, people might feel a little activated. (laughs) So um, maybe we can tap on... um, yeah, I think feel, just feeling a little overwhelmed and ungrounded right now, um, and then bringing them back to a place where they feel a little bit more centered um, would be awesome. Um, so do you know where the points on the body are, or should I explain them first? Why don't we do this? We can explain, you can explain them now, Okay. and um, then maybe we can put like a little, like a picture mm-hmm. I have a diagram that I can, a PDF that I can email you. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So we'll put that on, um, on like the site in, in your podcast section. So people Perfect. have access to it. Um, All right. so, so. yeah, so I guess I know where, I do know where most of the points are, um, from, you know, my training, but mm-hmm. do you think people, when they hear it, that they'll want to hear where the points are described? Or... Um, let me just go through them. I'll go through them quickly. Okay, perfect. And then, you know, they'll have the diagram and if they have questions, they can reach out to me. Okay, your thing. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. So the first part, um, the first point is the karate chop point, which is the fleshy part of the outside of your hand. It's like your high ya point, like right where you would do a karate chop. Mm-hmm. And you can tap on the left side or on the right side or, um, well, not with the karate chop point, but when we tap through the points, you can tap yeah. on both sides of the body as well. Yeah. Um, so the point after the karate chop point is the eyebrow point, which is right where your eyebrow begins. Again, one side, both sides, um, right side, left side, doesn't matter. Uh, the next point is the outside of the eye, which is not quite on the temple, but more on the bone right outside the eye. Point after that is underneath the eye, right on your bone under the eye. The next two points in pro EFT we do together, which is the under the nose point and the chin point. 
So you can do those with top two fingers, bottom two fingers on one hand, or you can just use two hands. And that's right under the nose and then like on the divot of your chin. The point after that is the, I'm sorry, the, the um, collarbone point, <laughs> um, which is right on your collarbone. Then the under the arm point, which is about three inches under your armpit or where the bra line um, of your, you know, your bra would be for women. The point after that is the liver point, which is right where the underwire of your bra would be on both sides of the body. Point after that is the wrist point. And for our listeners, it's probably the easiest to just bump your wrists together. Um, otherwise, you can do it like this with um, tapping all, all 10 fingers on one wrist and all 10 fingers on the other wrist. And the benefit to that is that there are meridian points in all 10 of your fingertips. So you just get more energetic bang for your buck doing it that way. But either way is cool. And then the last point is the top of the head, just right on the top of your head. So those are all of the pro EFT tapping points. And um, so I'm going to, as we tap through the points, I'm going to um, call out the point that we're on. And so just start gently tapping on that point. Don't, you don't want to, for our listeners, you don't want to tap too hard. This is tapping, not pounding. You don't want to hurt yourself. Um, so just tap gently. Uh, and I'm going to say um, a phrase or a word, and you're just going to repeat it back to me. Sound good? Sounds okay. perfect. And Crystal, if anything comes up for you while we're tapping, like a specific word or emotion or memory or anything, um, you can just shout it out and I'll kind of include it in our tapping language. Okay, perfect. Right. So how do you feel right now in terms of what we've been talking about? Do you feel activated or pulled in any kind of direction or... You know, I feel really inspired by the conversation, you know, mm -hmm. hanging out in this emotional realm of vulnerability is sort of my, my comfortable space. Yeah, I hear you. Um, so yeah, so I love that. I feel, I feel really inspired and I feel really okay. excited by the conscious conversation. Awesome. Okay. All right. So let's begin on the karate chat point. Um, even though there's, uh, there's all this overwhelm. And just repeat, repeat back what I say. Even yeah. though there's all this overwhelm. Um, and this activation. And this activation. And it's keeping me from feeling calm and peaceful in my body. It's keeping me from feeling calm and peaceful in my body. And it's keeping me from total self-acceptance. And it's keeping me from total self-acceptance. And there's a part of me that doesn't want to let it go. And there's a part of me that doesn't want to let it go. Maybe because. Maybe because. Um, it doesn't feel safe to totally accept myself. It doesn't feel safe to totally accept myself. I was taught that certain parts of me are right and certain parts of me are wrong. I was taught that certain parts of me are right and certain parts of me are wrong. And I want to I wanna get to the bottom of this. I want to get to the bottom of this. And I want to learn to love, honor, and acknowledge all of my parts. I want to learn to love honor and acknowledge all of the parts of myself. Especially the ones that I've deemed as bad or wrong. Especially the ones that I've deemed as bad or wrong. I wanna really send some extra love to those parts. I wanna really send some extra love to those parts. Okay, shake out your hands, take a deep breath. <sighs> Normally we do three rounds on the karate chat point, but just for the sake of time, we'll just do one for now. Mm -hmm. So eyebrow point, um, all this overwhelm, all this overwhelm outside of the eye. Um, this is brought up a lot. This is brought up a lot under the eye. I'm not sure I like it. I'm not sure I like it under the nose and chin. I feel kind of overwhelmed. I feel kind of overwhelmed. Uh, collarbone point, point. Um, all this new information, all this new information. Um, under the arm, all this self-judgment, all this self-judgment, uh, liver point. I've been holding on to it for so long. I've been holding on to it for so long. Uh, wrist point, And I don't know how to let it go. And I don't know how to let it go. Top of the head. I'm not sure it's safe to let it go. I'm not sure it's safe to let it go. Eyebrow point. Who would I be if I let it go? Who would I be if I let it go? Outside of the eyes, someone who just like loved and accepted herself. 
someone who just loved and accepted herself? Under the eye. Uh, that doesn't seem right. That doesn't seem right. Under the um, nose and chin. That's not what I was taught. That's not what I was taught. Uh, collarbone point. That's not what my family told me to believe about myself. That's not what my family told me to believe about myself. Uh, under the arm. But I kind of am intrigued by, by the idea of acknowledging all of my parts. I'm intrigued by the idea of acknowledging all of my parts. Uh, liver point. And letting them be okay. And letting them be okay. Wrist point. Um, there's a sense of peace that sort of comes with that. There's a sense of peace that comes with that. Top of the head. And a weird sense of acceptance. And a weird sense of acceptance. Eyebrow point. But I don't know if I'm ready to accept all of myself. But I don't know if I'm ready to accept all of myself. No, I'm definitely not ready. No, I'm definitely not ready. Under the eye. I'd rather hold on to this overwhelm. I'd rather hold on to this overwhelm. Under the nose and chin and all of this self-judgment. And all of this self-judgment. Um, collarbone point. This is what I know. This is what I know. This is what's familiar. This is what's familiar. And this is what I was taught. This is what I was taught. Uh, under the arm. I don't know how to do it any other way. I don't know how to do it any other way. Um, liver point. But I'd like to learn. But I'd like to learn. Wrist point. I'd like to learn how to accept and love all of my parts. I'd like to learn how to love and accept all of my parts. Top of the head. I wonder if it's possible to let this overwhelm go. I wonder if it's possible to let this overwhelm go. Um, eyebrow point. I choose to let some of this overwhelm go. I choose to let some of this overwhelm go. Uh, outside of the eye. Uh, I choose to let some of this um, self-judgment go. I choose to let some of this self-judgment go. Under the eye. And just let myself be all of who I am. And just let myself be all of who I am. Um, under the nose and chin. Um, everything that I am in this moment. Everything that I am in this moment. Collarbone point. The good, the bad, all of it. The good, the bad, all of it. It's all okay. It's all okay. It's all part of me. It's all part of me. And that's okay. And that's okay. Under the arm, I choose self-acceptance. I choose self-acceptance. Um, liver point, I choose to know that I'm safe in this moment. I choose to know that I'm safe in this moment. Wrist point, it's safe to feel safe in my body. It's safe to feel safe in my body. Top of the head, it's safe to let all of myself be okay. It's safe to let all of myself be okay. Eyebrow point, it's safe to let go of this overwhelm. It's safe to let go of this overwhelm. Um, outside of the eye, I choose peace. I choose peace. Under the eye, I choose to let go of any remaining resistance to letting go of this overwhelm. I choose to let go of any remaining resistance to let go of this overwhelm. Um, under the nose and chin, um, I choose to feel grounded in my body. I choose to feel grounded in my body. Um, uh, collarbone point, I choose to let go of this resistance. I choose to let go of this resistance. Under the arm, I choose to accept myself exactly as I am. I choose to accept myself exactly as I am. Liver point, I choose to tap into love. I choose to tap into love. Uh, wrist point, I choose to tap into feeling peace in this moment. I choose to tap into feeling peace in this moment. Top of the head and peace in every cell of my body. And peace in every cell of my body. Right now right now shake out your hands take a deep breath <sighs> Ooh. so that was just a short tapping session activating a little bit of peace brain sending that calming signal to the amygdala how do you feel yeah i feel great karen that was like really really awesome. And I felt myself, even though I felt good when we started, I really felt myself like taking a deep breath at certain points mm. as we tapped and sort mm. of settling in even deeper to the conversation. Um, and I felt a lot of like the activation in my brain, like uh -huh. things shifting. Yeah. 
which I really like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not uncommon to feel like the energy is just moving or doing different things or taking on like a different sensation in your body. Um, and we used, you know, we used pretty general language. This wasn't specific to anything, um, you know, anything in particular so that everybody could you know, tap along and relate to that. So, but I'm not surprised that, um, you know, you said you started taking deeper breaths. Yeah. It's like when our body is turning on that relaxation response, it's like, it just creates that physical space. And it's like, oh yeah, I can breathe. <laughs> Cause we're all walking around. Like, you know, most of the time we're so tense and we're making it really hard to breathe and take those long, slow, deep breaths and activate that parasympathetic nervous system that calms us down and relaxes us. So right. as we tap, it just opens everything up and really facilitates that movement of the breath. Mm, yeah. yeah. Cool. I love that. It's, you know, our body's way to sort of reclaim itself, right? Oh, oh my God. That's beautiful. I love, love that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> body's oh. making me clean itself. I love it's it. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So Karen, you have a beautiful website and you have a cl an online class that you're, you're into right now, right? Yeah. We're in uh, week three right now of my eight week online course called Mindset Blast Off. Fuel your online mission with the power of pro EFT tapping. And we just, it's basically taking this a whole lot deeper and looking at all of the different ways where we feel stuck and where we can, you know, shine the light in that swampy area and figure out where those, where those patterns that we're living into were created and, you know, tapping on, it's safe to let them go and it's safe to create something new for myself moving forward and um, dealing a lot with self-sabotage and procrastination and feeling safe to expand and go bigger in the world and be more of your authentic self and, um, and really feel freaking awesome about it. <laughs> That's the key. You want to expand and feel great about it. Yeah. And not feel yeah. held back. Yeah. That's awesome. So, and you also have a great resource. Your Facebook group is great. You do some awesome stuff in there too. So if people want to get in touch with you, your website is theluckysoul.com. That's it. Theluckysoul.com. I would love for anyone who wants to, to join my free Facebook group, which you can do at theluckysoul.com backslash freebies. There's a link there to join. And Every week I jump in live to do what's called Tap It Out Tuesday. So I choose a different topic every week and come in the group live and do a specific tapping session on something. And you can always request a topic that you'd like to tap on. There's over 30 or 40 tapping videos, I think, in there at this point. I do challenges in there, tapping challenges. I just did one on ending self-sabotage, which was awesome. And um, yeah, it's free. So it's a great resource if you would like to explore tapping on a deeper level. And um, on Instagram, you can follow me at the lucky soul. And um, I also have a free tapping meditation um, MP3 download uh, that you can get on the fear of getting visible, releasing the fear of getting visible uh, in your business that you can get at the lucky soul.com backslash freebies. Yay. Thank you, Karen. You're, you're giving so much information to people and, and sharing so much of yourself in such a beautiful way. It's just an honor to have witnessed um, your journey through your recollection of it and how really by your own experience, you're engaging with others that have maybe had similar experiences or similar uh, emotions, right? And how that is just circling and vortexing and creating this really awesome way to raise the vibe. Well, thank you so much. That's, that's beautiful. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you for being with us, Karen. Thank you so much for having me. It's really been a joy to be here. Thank you so much.